Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Welcome, everyone. I am delighted to be here today with you. One of my favorite people in the entire world is my podcast guest today. Her name is Marisha Horseman, and you definitely want to listen closely and take notes and listen to every bit of this podcast because Marisha has literally saved not only my marriage, but my life. And we're going to talk a little bit about how she's able to do that for people like me and maybe you. Marisha has been living holistically since 1998 when she had total health collapse brought about by a self-destructive relationship with her body. Recognizing it as a crisis on all levels of her being, she dived into the realms of body, mind, and spirit. This healing journey took her all over the world. Sound a little bit like eat, pray, love to you? Yeah, that's what we're talking about here. That level of all over the world. Not only did Marisha resolve her detrimental relationship with food and her body, her life and happiness wholly transformed. She is devoted to helping women heal their relationship with food, free themselves from the battle with their body, and journey the path of radiant nourishment. Marisha, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you, Kathy. Absolutely delighted to be here. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. So the one thing that Marisha didn't mention, in, and I didn't mention in her intro, is hmm, you might have noticed a little accent. So Marisha, <laughs> where do you live? Okay, I live in the UK. I live in a little... Well, it's not that little, but it's little compared to the States. A little town called, a uh, little place called Ipswich in Suffolk. Uh, Suffolk's famous, this area is famous for Ed Sheeran, if that puts it on the map for anyone. Um, oh, yeah. He's our, yeah, he's our most famous export from Suffolk, I'd say. Um, <laughs> and But I haven't always lived here. I grew up in Jersey in the Channel Islands and also the Republic of Ireland as well. Um, so I'm a bit of a mixed, I call myself British really, because I'm kind of quite mixed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, your accent is definitely British, but you're really a world, such a world traveler. You've spent quite a bit of time in the U.S. Um, and I didn't even know about the Republic of Ireland. Every time I talked to you, I learned something new about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have um, I it was a surprise for me to come back to the U.K. because um, I was living in Australia and India and, you know, Greece and other places. And um and I came back here and I'm really happy to be here but it was a surprise for me too it was one of those ones where your intuition is telling you to go somewhere and the mind is going really okay so yeah I, came back <laughs> in and I love it and I'm looking forward to you coming over to visit oh yeah uh we we got big plans as soon as <laughs> yeah. um the world opens back up again so that we can all travel I have big plans to come visit you Marisha and uh, it's going to be so much fun so I really yeah. look forward to that. So everybody hold on to your hats because uh, those uh, the really tight circle of people that know me, they might even get it. Uh, some uh, some lucky few might get an invitation to go visit Marisha with me, depending on what she ends up doing, if she does a retreat or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So let's back up, though, because OK, people people don't know anything about you yet other than that little bit that I shared. And there's so much uh, leaping that you have done. You have really dared to change your entire life for the better. And I don't know where you want to start, but could you just tell us a little bit about your journey to where you are today? Yes. Yes. Um, well, the, a good place to start is where you mentioned at the beginning about um, 1998. So 1998, just to give a little bit of a background so you can see how it progressed. I was living in the Australian bush. I was a cowgirl and I was living what I would have called then my dream life. I had um, 
imagined this life I was living ever since I was 16. And I had met the chap I was engaged to there. And we lived on what you would call a ranch in the States. We called it cattle station. And in one way, uh, I was very, very happy because that's what I dreamed about. I was living the life. But I was inside. I wasn't at all. I was a complete mess inside. And a great blessing happened because I had this huge health collapse. And it didn't feel like a blessing. It felt like total disaster. And I, I knew when it happened that it was a wake up call from the deepest part of my being. I knew it went right down to my soul, that it was a soul cry. And the collapse was brought about, as I say, you know, a, a really detrimental relationship with food and my body. I had a woeful eating disorder for about 10 years. I struggled with um, depression. I had systemic candida. I was full of toxins. I and I had chronic fatigue syndrome. That's what I collapsed with. So I chose to go the holistic path because I knew that it involved every level of my being. So I've lived holistically since then. But that isn't what I would describe as the big leap. The big, the big leap that happened then was within a year, I chose to leave that life and that relationship and everything. And I left with a backpack and I just went. And, and that began four years of searching, as Kathy said, um, traveling the world, um, for those who are listening. And I traveled throughout Asia and back to Europe and then down to South Africa. And to cut a very long story short, you know, I was reading every book I could get my hands on, visiting teachers, going to retreats, going to different therapists. And I would like to say, you know, and magically... <laughs> my relationship with food and my body got better, but actually it got worse, which is always, people are really surprised by that. And that's because I took the same mindset and I plugged that in. So I took the same tendency to extremes, control, rigidity, forcing, not listening, denying, compensating, restricting. And I took that into what I would say more healthy realms. And so I, even though I was traveling around, what, what became very clear to me is wherever I went, my misery went with me because I would seemingly be cl clambering out of it. And then I would go back into a relapse again. And so, but I was gathering resources as I went. And what I was really looking for was I was looking for someone who had been where I had been where I was then, someone who had been where I was, who could address my issues on every level of one's being, including spiritual, and who had come out the other side. And I never found them. But what did happen, I was, um, this was probably the second great big leap. <laughs> so four years later, I'm on a two week stopover in India on the way back from Australia back to um, Jersey, Channel Islands, the little island near France where my mother lived. And I was on my way back to see her. I hadn't seen her for years and years. And I, I thought, well, you know, I'll stop off between Australia and the UK. And I stopped for two weeks. And when I was there, I was invited um, to stay. Actually, I was invited the day before I was leaving to stay. And I knew that this was going to cause complete uproar. And it was a stay without an ending. And I also knew this was the opportunity. This was the opportunity to face that which I hadn't been able to resolve in myself. So I stayed and I ended up staying four years. And wow. um, yeah. And so a couple of years in, as you know, two, three years in, I begin to realize, oh, my goodness, I am becoming the person I had been seeking. And that was the beginning of Nourishing Light. Yeah. Wow. And Nourishing Light is the name of your company, your business, your programming, all yes. of the above? Or? Yes. Nourishing Light is what I, I see it is the great, it, it, it embraces all the, the work I do. And it's about traveling the path of radiant nourishment, which is what I term it. So 
it's about nourishing that light of who you are on all levels of your being and it is um both very practical it it tends to the symptoms what how we are with food and our body but also we work on the inside the underlying causes and ultimately it's about aligning oneself with our highest most radiant self and our most radiant potential you know letting that express yeah Yeah. So something you said while you were sharing all that was that wherever you went, your misery went with you. (laughs) And, and that's so powerful, Marisha, because that's what happens with all of us. If we we don't actually address our issues, right? You can't run away from your problems. You can't run away from yourself. No, absolutely. You've got to. And the way I saw those four years, they were really, really tough four years in many ways. They were full of grace, full of healing and wonderful things, but also really, really tough because I felt like I was facing the wall of my own self. Like I was having to face, sit at the wall and face myself. And you're, it, it's so true. We, we all come to a point where it's like, I've suffered enough. I'm willing now to face whatever it is I'm going in there. And that is the most amazing journey any of us can take. And it, and it, you know, it gives us treasures way beyond anything else in this life can give us, you know, treasures, which we will take across with us when we leave because it's part of our innate being, you know? Yeah. And that's something I've learned from working with you. And by the way, everybody, when I started working, you remember when we started working together? How long have you, we've been working together now? Like two years? Has yeah, it been about two years? It's coming yeah. up that I mean, amazingly, yes. Yeah. yeah, the time has flown. I can't believe it. Because yeah. when I look back and I think, I it wasn't, I, I call it woo-woo. I wasn't even into woo-woo when I first met you. And now I am so deep into it. I'm like, give me more, Marisha, give me more. Because Marisha doesn't ever force anything on you. She never kicks you in the ass. Um, (laughs) She loves you and gently nudges. You don't even feel the nudge, uh, nudges you towards your best self. I mean, honestly, two years later, I look back and go, how did she do this? And it's not just me. She does this with, because she's also worked privately with my husband and my husband, (laughs) is the bull Taurus, right? Yeah. Right. He does Marisha? not like change. <laughs> he is not like change. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't do change, period. And yet Marisha has, she has helped him change in ways. Oh my goodness. You wouldn't even believe how he has changed. And still, I don't know how you do it because I'm, you know, I'm on calls with you and him. Now we even work together. Marisha has done us the great favor of working with us both separately. And then as a couple, which has just literally saved my marriage. Um, Marisha can tell you how many times I've been like, it's over. I'm done. And my husband has probably said the same. And then she's like, well, let's see if we can have a conversation. And she helps us come back together. And honestly, our relationship is stronger than it's ever been because of working with you. And it's because you two are so willing to to work on it together. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I love working with you both. And it's a lot of fun too. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. So going back to facing th- that uh, suffering that you've had, facing yes. what's going on inside of you, facing that misery, mm-hmm. um, you know, I would love any suggestions from you. And I don't know if you can even give suggestions on this, but how do you help people be able to even face it? Because, I mean, you know me. Mm-hmm. I have stuffed it down. I have stuffed, I have, I have tried to mask my pain, my misery, my suffering with food, with booze, with overwork, over exercise. I go from one addiction to another to not have to feel that pain. And it sounds like you kind of did the same thing. Maybe you wouldn't have called it an addiction, but you went from one extreme to another, which is what I do too. One extreme to another. 
Um, so how do you stop that? How, what's the first step maybe to stop that trend of, you know, not facing the fear, not facing the misery? Yeah, this is a great question. I knew you were going to ask me some really good questions, get me to dig I'm in sorry. there, aren't you? No, it's good. It's good. That's good. Um, the, the, is part the very of it, first, is, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to ask you, is part of it acknowledging that what we're struggling with is a big part of what we're struggling with is our body and incorporating that with your mind and spirit? You know, not just seeing your body as, hey, I'm fat. But seeing your body as, hmm, why am I carrying this extra weight? What part of my mind or my spirit isn't in order, isn't in alignment to allow me to do that? I don't know. I'm making stuff yeah. up here, Marisha. No, no, you're, 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 you're going the right direction. Because I'd say the first thing, and, and, and I would like, um, you know, in Nourishing Light, I do begin with food and the body, you know, because our relationship with food and our relationship in our body is going to reflect in every aspect of our life. And, and it's a place where so many women get caught, you know, it's, you know, my, I have a term called disharmonized eating. Um, and, you know, from where I see it, I think the majority of women are caught in disharmonized eating. We think it is perfectly normal to, to be on diets the whole time and to talk about our bodies the way we do and to control and force and, 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 and this addictive quality of food, you know, is spread out there in the media. It's, it's actually engendered. I mean, there, there are people whose whole career is about designing food so that it will override people's natural mechanism of I've had enough and full and get them to eat more. So you're absolutely right. There's this, this and we'll, we'll keep it with food in the body because this is where I can really speak with um yeah good greater strength from um and the first i would say the first step is to see that it is a symptom so you are going the right way i would say yeah, it's a symptom. symptom it is it's a symptom it's not actually the main problem and where we get so caught up is we look at the body and our relationship with food so re relationship with food is going to involve our relationship with our body put it this way I, i've never met anyone who has a fantastic relationship with food, um, who, who doesn't have a good, sorry, other way around. I know met anyone who doesn't have a good relationship with food, who has a fantastic relationship with their body. Mm, yeah, you know, they, they come hand in hand. And mm. I, um, where I like to, to say is it's, it's this realization that it is not, food is not the issue. The body is not the issue. Yes, you know, that, you know, and a large part at the beginning with Nourishing Light is getting people to transition to being able to eat healthily as a lifestyle change, not as a, as a diet. Um, right. But you do not offer a diet. I know that. Because yeah, if you yeah. did, I would have been on it. And you're like, oh, no, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you yeah. what to eat. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I only have one, one, as Kathy knows, I've only got one main um thing don't i which is nearing a rule i have no rules i have this expression in nourishing like there's no rules only tools and there's only one point which is edging towards one and it is about food yeah yeah that makes me laugh so i don't i never tell people what they're there to eat but i do give guidelines most definitely like when we do the cleanse i give guidelines i give guidelines and i help there are there are there are, yeah with, within that with each person it's a unique relationship with food to go back to where we were talking about the symptom with um, the body, hang on, I've just lost my thread. Where was I? Um, looking at the body. Yes, it's, it's about seeing it because we tend to come out the gate when we think our body is an issue, we go into this all out war and we battle it. And that is only going to perpetuate it. And what it does is it immediately catches us in the great big pothole of willpower because we think the way out of it is to force it, push it, more rules, more regulations, counting calories, weighing up. I mean, all this stuff, which just exhausts me to even say it. And, and by the way, 
anybody who's listening, I've been there. I did it all. I've tried, <laughs> I tried every diet there was possible, you know, and I, I didn't eat fat for two years. I was addicted to sugar. I mean, I tried every single way I could. Um, and really, there is no end to that way. If we go in fighting, no, there isn't. it's like we're fighting our shadow. And so yeah. first step, seeing it as a symptom and that the second thing is seeing it as a symptom and it arose from a time when you didn't have a better way of coping. So it is a coping mechanism. And this is where great compassion comes in. And I wish to really... I, in a way, I would love that the energy just flow out from this podcast and embrace anybody who's really struggling with food and with their body and just so that they can be held and know if they take one thing away from this is, you know, you're not weak, you're not a failure, you're not any of these awful things that your mind says to you are because you're struggling with food in your body. It is purely something that helped you deal when you were overwhelmed at a time in your life, probably when you were a child, it was learned. Some people, most people, it's quite young, can be in teen years, but at some point, there was an overwhelm in life of emotions, of pain, and it was a coping mechanism, and it must have worked because the behavior is repeated, and then the neural pathways get set up, and it becomes a coping mechanism, and so seeing those two things helps enormously because then that negative programming begins to shift, and we begin to see it for what it is. And we can work with that. And then the beauty of it is as we unravel it, we learn these great tools and techniques, which we can apply to other areas of our life. But it's like we're unraveling from the inside out and we begin to get nourished from the inside out. And as you know, Kathy, that's when, you know, you really start radiating. Yeah. I mean, like you're yeah. so radiant is what I every time I see you, you're radiant. <laughs> Thank you. unraveling so I just want to reflect on what you just said, which is. Yeah. Um, when I came to you, I, mm -hmm. I used the words, I am tired of white knuckling my eating because it isn't working. I'm exhausted. Just like you said, you said it's exhausting. I was exhausted. I also felt like I had this big L on my head. I'm a loser because yeah. I can't control my overeating. And I felt like it was me, you know, it, it, you know, like it was a personal uh, failure that I had yeah. and you helped yeah. me see no it's a coping mechanism let's talk about that and <laughs> and we've been working on that um you know had I already realized that you know I had issues from my childhood yes did I know how to resolve them no and little by little and in the most amazingly uh non- <gasps> forceful way I don't even know how to say how loving you are Marisha how intuitive you are how insightful you are how patient you are on every level you have uh, oh my gosh I'm going to start crying here in a minute that's what Tom's my husband Tom he'll see me and he'll go oh god you look like you cried did you just talk to Marisha <laughs> <laughs> and not because I'm sad I'm not sad when I talk to Marisha I just get so emotional because she's so loving and so caring and just draws out of you but um I working with Marisha I have um begun to deal more with those childhood issues I've begun to release them I feel like I'm really far in releasing them quite honestly but I know Marisha doesn't think I'm there yet so I, I know I'm not if she if she doesn't feel I'm totally there yet I know I'm not uh because she is very wise on this stuff and obviously I'm still crying over it so I'm not um but once that started happening um it was it was like a miracle because I started eating better without any rules and regulations yeah and and Marisha would just be like, okay, how, how did that taste? How did that go? And at first, all the healthy food, um, vegetables and stuff like that, tastes like dirt. Remember me telling you, <laughs> it all tastes like dirt. <laughs> and you would be like, have you tried this vegetable? I'm like, yes, it tastes like dirt. How about, how about lentils? It tastes like dirt. <laughs> and she's like, your taste buds will change yeah. because you're 
body, what do you say about your body? Your body is there to, will heal your body. Well, I, and I'm, I can't remember what, the word in you. Yet. Yeah. I, yeah. Lots, lots of things I say about the body. I mean, one of them is the, the um, with, uh, with the taste buds is that, you know, the, the taste buds will return to their original, I call it retraining the taste buds. It's like the taste buds have become distorted yeah. by a lot of the food we eat. And then once we start eating healthy, wholesome stuff in this way where it's not rigid and it's we have, you right. know, it's too much to go into in this call. But that whole process of retraining your taste buds, um, the body's its own wisdom. It, it knows what it needs to eat. You start listening to it and you begin to hear the signals again. And that's one of the mm -hmm. things that happened is that and I remember you had it, too. You'd say oh my goodness, um, am I ever going to hear when I've had enough? You know, I've really, I remember you saying, I've really done my body in, you know, will I ever hear those signals? And I'm like, absolutely, right. just might take a little yeah. longer. Like with me, it took me months before I heard my satiation signal um, because I'd overridden it for, I think it was about 20 years by the time I heard it. So, um, but I think what you were asking me there about the body is when I say your body's not a mistake. Is that what I'm talking about? That's is right. That you asking? That's exactly yeah. where I was going. Your body is not a mistake. That's right. Because I really did feel, and in Marisha, I, I'm going to confess something to you. I, this past, uh, I got, I got my new computer. I got a new, um, better camera and I saw myself better and, and I started beating myself up I'm like oh look at that saggy skin you look how fat you are you wouldn't be like this if you hadn't overeaten for so long and then I'm like no your body is perfect like it is and it's just going to keep getting better so you've, Absolutely. you've sunk into my head <laughs> yeah exactly you know when we we treat our body with kindness and we nourish it and we listen to it we give it the opportunity to come back into balance and then it it just happens by itself you don't i mean as you say you don't focus on losing weight the weight loss is a side effect of you coming back into harmony with your body with your food with your eating and your body it just happens and and it's so true the body's not a mistake um and the way i like to describe it is um you know the power that created the entire universe created your body as well. And anybody who's listening, that goes for you too, <laughs> all of us, you know, the whole all universe, you know, and everything yeah. is in perfect design. Your body is not a mistake. It is perfectly designed. And what's more is our soul comes here to experience itself through the body the body is this perfect vehicle for it to experience think of things that you love in your life and you will see that your body is essential to you experiencing them so an example I like to give is I love to stroke my daughter's hair when she goes to sleep and just inhale her mm. well you know without mm. my hands and my nose and my body I'm not going to experience that if you think of anything that we love anything that fills us with awe or with beauty or joy it our body is the vehicle for our soul and our soul is you know vastly intelligent <laughs> the body is vastly intelligent it's got the as i say the power that creates the entire universe is in every cell it's you know we don't have to tell the body to regulate different hormones and to oh no now you must digest and now you must do this i mean it is designed for harmony and certain things throw it out of harmony but it is always trying its best right up until our last breath it will try its best to maintain harmony and the that's amazing that's really amazing that our body never gives up never it never does and i mean uh, marcia i've been eating really really poorly and I'm, I'm going to share with our listeners how poorly, because some people don't understand the level of bad eating. <laughs> they think, oh, I had one cookie a day. I would have an entire container, like a, not just the sleeve of Oreos, but the entire package. I remember one time Tom bought a package of Oreo cookies and the next day he went to get them and I'd eaten all of them. And he said, Kelly, where are those cookies? And I said, I ate them. And he's like, huh? I mean, he really couldn't believe it. <laughs> I said, I ate them. He goes, I just bought 
them yesterday. And I said, I know I ate them. All of them? Yes. All of them. That's how over, out of control I was. There was an empty hole I was trying to fill. Absolutely. So if I opened up a bag of potato chips, I ate all of them. I opened up a bag of cookies, I ate all of them. And I was never filled. And now I, I don't do that anymore. Um, I'm shocked. I'm literally shocked. And this is what I mean by Marisha saved my life. I was 50 pounds heavier than I am now. And I'm still uh, not within a healthy weight range uh, for my body, but I am getting there slowly, but surely I'm not focused on weight. I don't even get on the scale unless um, I'm actually, you know, have to, 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 I'm like, I think I've lost weight. And just to give you, um, Marcia, I haven't shared this with you yet, but I was laying, I used to go to bed at night after having eaten way out of control, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I would go to bed at night and I would feel my stomach and I would just think, oh my God, how, it, I was sick to my stomach from eating all that. Uh, my, you know, my stomach was huge and I would lay there and just think bad things about myself and wake up in the morning depressed. Now I literally go to bed. I put my hands on my stomach. That's how I sleep. I like to sleep on my back with my hands on my stomach. And I go, oh my gosh, my stomach is going back to normal size. And it's so exciting to feel it shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And I'm not even doing anything to do it. Yeah. And the other thing that I shared with you, and then we're going to uh, go on to some of the tools that you've shared, because um, we want to get to a couple of tools. But um, so I've lost 50 pounds literally changed my taste buds and how I know I've changed my taste buds is my husband still eats all the old stuff I ate. Um, you know, bags of wavy lays, um, these cookies that I've told Marisha about <laughs> these cookies that he gets by like five and six containers of these cookies. And I used to think, Oh, those cookies are so delicious. So delicious. And I tasted one a couple of of months ago and I told Marisha oh my god it was disgusting I couldn't even swallow the bite I had to spit it out because it tasted like rancid oil and now when I see my husband eating this stuff I'm not at all tempted because I know now it tastes terrible to me and I can't believe in such a short period of time that my taste buds have changed that much because I really thought they would it, I would forever think everything tasted like dirt and I would just have to force myself to eat dirt <laughs> Yeah, it's so true. It's it changes for saving my life because oh, I was headed for a heart attack or a stroke or something like that after abusing my body for sixty four years, and yet my body is here, just like you said, working to repair itself every day now. Absolutely, and you know, I mean, what's so wonderful working with you is you say yes. Hmm? When we work together, it's like, <laughs> yes, I remember you saying, well, I, I don't really know what you're talking about, but yes, you know, you trusted and we went with, I'll try know, it. That's what it. I always yeah. say. I'll try it. I'll try it. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and I don't always get joy. it right, but I always try and keep trying. And Marisha will be like, okay, let's try this instead. Let's try that instead. Here's a different tool. Maybe this one will work. And eventually she finds something to work. So let's talk about a couple of those tools okay. that you have taught me about. Okay. One is astrology. I know. It's a strange one, isn't it? When we're talking about food in the body and suddenly astrology comes up. Yes. So, so talk about how you help, what tools you use of astrology to help people like me. Right. Okay. So astrology is not, not everyone who comes to Nourishing Light will end up um, partaking in astrology. But if people mentor with me, then I will say part of that mentoring is having an astrology session I call it liberating astrology because what it's about is looking at so if you look at the astrology chart this is it's like a blueprint of what your soul is here to experience and it gives lots and lots of clues <laughs> it gives it shows us where your direction of greatest fulfillment is in this life soul fulfillment and that tends to be a part of our life that isn't a comfort zone it is a part where maybe we're quite challenged to move towards. It also shows us our comfort zones. It shows the way we relate, our emotional security. And, and then as I'm speaking, you might begin to see why this is tied up with food, emotional security. As we know, emotions are so linked in how we nourish ourselves, how we relate, what our thinking is like. 
um, where where are our our, um, our gifts and are we actually you know fully living those gifts or is that something we're bearing underground so I like to um, in mentoring that's something I do on a on a when I work one to one I like to do a liberating astrology because it gives us a bit of a roadmap and it helps us connect with that soul essence in the person of well, what's the soul here to experience and what's going to give it its greatest joy yeah. and and I love that part of it but I also and I also love that you were able to pinpoint some challenges that I was facing and where yeah. you saw that in my astrology and what what I could what I could say oh that's happening because of this so you can just release it there's nothing you can do about that right now just you know know that this is going to be happening and it's okay and that's so freeing yeah I mean as, as what somebody said the other day um who had a, uh, a reading they just said you know it just makes me realize I'm not so cookie yeah I'm just you know it's not me it's that's exactly you know it's a pattern I got as crazy as I thought I was <laughs> This is in the stars for me. <laughs> well, I mean, in one way, it is a part. Of it. it's, it's not like it's not us at all. But what it is, is it's a pattern and it's it's a pattern and it detaches us. It's not it, we get detached from it from a sense of um, we don't take it so personally, because the truth is. At our very, very core, you know, we're not our thoughts, we're not our emotions, we are an a drop of that ocean of love that has come here to experience itself and part of that experience is thoughts and emotions how we respond but we identify with those thoughts and emotions and then we think that's who we are and oh my goodness I'm such an emotional nutcase that's what I used to call myself emotional nutcase I mean I was someone who was completely hijacked by my emotions and emotions are so interlinked with our food and our eating habits and how we relate with our body and so um when astrology came into my life when i um first went to india in 2000 i it helped me so enormously to see my patterns and see them for what they were they were patterns that can be transformed it wasn't inherently mm. who i was oh i love that patterns yeah. that can be transformed i love that yeah because um identifying it just like you talked about identifying the symptoms identifying those patterns that's really the the you have to do that before you can change it you can't change anything you're not aware of absolutely absolutely yeah, and there's a bit I, I realized as I was speaking then I said about detach and, and I'm I'd just like to to clarify on that because it's quite interesting when um when we're working with uh our relationship with food in our body there's actually two you know, there's detach and disconnect. So disconnect is always disconnection from our body is always there when we've got a, an issue with food. And so what we work towards a nourishing light is getting one connected and present and really inhabiting the body. And at the same time, we create distance. So we're actually detaching from our thoughts and emotions, which we have identified. So we're dropping out of the head and very much into the presence in the body. And astrology really helps us with that and you know for example if I gave an example if someone has a moon sign um, uh, with their moon is is um, placed where it it needs freedom to feel um, happy and emotionally secure and yet it has a very strong propensity in the chart to codependency where it needs to be needed and whatever, you can see how that person is going to really, really struggle and end up stuffing a lot of stuff down. Either it's going to stuff the freedom down or it's going to stuff it, the, the needing down. It, you know, there's these contrasting battles that a lot of us have because that's what makes us unique. You know, we have these different little things going on inside and by working on them, seeing them for what they are and working on them, we have a lot of fun with them, don't we, Cathy? You know? We see we, we have a lot of giggles. We say there's there's um there's Tom's Taurus mood. <laughs> yeah, I don't like change. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and my husband, he's one who won't cry at anything, he won't show emotion. And it's so um touching to me to watch him when we're in these sessions together with you try to hold back those emotions and hold back those tears because you know that 
that just shows me how, how much you're able to help us and able to help everyone you work with because of your intuition and your knowledge and all these tools. Okay. So let's talk about another tool. Okay. And that, and you guys, there are more tools that she has than I can even mention today. We're just <laughs> going to talk about a couple of them um, to give you an idea, but whatever comes up for you, she's is going to have a tool for it because, which I love, I love the practicality of it. It's, it's the, the woo woo combined with the practicality that just creates this uniqueness about you, Marisha, that I, I that I absolutely adore. Okay. So the other tool is, um, essential oils, which yes. I, I didn't know anything about before I met you. And now, uh, <laughs> I, I have them with me all the time. I give them away Melissa? to friends and people. <laughs> yeah, this is Melissa. And Marisha is teaching me so much about how essential oils can help you. And for example, I ran out of, um, on guard that I was using and I'm like, Oh, I don't, my body doesn't feel as good. And I'm like, I haven't taken on guard for, a week. <laughs> yeah. So I've got it on system. order. It should be here today. Looking forward to oh, it. Great. Yeah. I love it. So talk about um, essential oils and how you use those to help people transform their relationship with food. Okay. So uh, well, relationship with anything, but well, know. it's relationship with anything. Absolutely. Um, but um, what's really no, but what's really important about this when we talk essential oils is that we're talking about therapeutic grade. So they've got to be 100% pure, 100% potent for them to work really effectively. And most of the essential oils and, you know, and, and I didn't know about this until five or six years ago. You know, I got the best oils that I could source from the health shop. But actually, um, oils, they need to be, it, it's not just the purity they need to be grown and harvested and distilled in a way that also protects their potency. And when you get that combination, when you get that 100% pure and 100% potent, that's therapeutic grade. And they, how would I describe it? It's like, um, it's like when you start using them, you realize, oh my goodness, this is champagne and I've been drinking table wine. You know, it's that kind of difference. Ooh. It's like, what is this? Because <laughs> They work and that's, you know, they just work yes. in the way that we've always, well, those of us who've been using oils, I've been using oils since 1993. So I actually was using oils way before I had my wake up call. Um, did I ever tell you how I, um, the, the story about me first, huh. essential oils? No. Gosh, have we got time? Very quick story. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So I if was actually, time. okay. I was in a little, I was doing a, a, a business course in a little town in Northern Tipperary in Ireland, because I was living in Ireland, Republic of Ireland, this is Ireland at the time. And ever since I was little, I'd always wanted to be in a bank robbery. I thought they were very exciting because I'd, I'd seen them on film. So every time I would go into a bank and they would be coming in to do the, you know, the change the money or whatever it was in those days, it was, you know, a bit more old fashioned then. Um, I'd say, mommy, mommy, is this a bank robbery? And she'd be like, no. And I'd be like, oh. So anyway, years later, I don't know, I must, I'm about 20 and yeah, 1993, I'm 20 years old. And I, I've just discovered essential oils whilst on my lunch break from this business course I was doing. And I'd spent the whole lunch break with, you know, my nose over different oils, smelling them. And I, I remember the oils I bought, it was sandalwood and ylang ylang. And I walked up the road and I'm going past this bank and the next thing, this car pulls up and it's an armed bank robbery. And these guys are jumping out with sawn off shotguns and, and balaclavas. And I was, <laughs> I was a little bit chilled. <laughs> I just kind of stood there going, wow, it's a bank robbery. And everybody's cleared off the streets. And I think, oh, well, I'll go down and take the license plate. So I'm standing behind and I've got nothing to write down. So I'm memorizing it. And the guy who's driving the car is waving his gun at me and everything. And I'm like, oh, I think I better, I better, you know, move. And to cut a very long story short, I ended up taking cover. I saw there was a man. It was when mobile phones weren't really around. There were those great big ones. You remember those? those. And I saw that he had one yeah. in his car. So I'm banging on the window saying call the police and he won't do it so I open up the back door and I'm like call the police this was just around the corner from the bank and eventually he does and then I'm thinking I'm really exposed so I sit in his back seat 
but I keep the door open and my feet out just in case yeah and anyway all goes I walk into the bank say and I'm so chilled and it was only years later I realized it was because of um probably that I was so yes. chilled from the essential yes, oils I, yeah <laughs> so I always think when I think ylang ylang and sandalwood is a combo yeah that that sentiment oh and that chill you but have you more story. I'm telling you, I, again, every time I think I know all of Marisha's stories, there's another one. I've never heard that one. That is so awesome. That is such a great story. You know what? Your life needs to become a movie. And, <laughs> and I need a big screen movie, not a lifetime movie. So we're going to have to talk about that uh, uh, outside podcast because your life is just too amazing. You have to have a movie I, I, made about your life. I'll tell you the second part to that story outside because I know we've run out of time, but it actually goes on. <laughs> it's part two. Oh my yeah. gosh. All right. So for our listeners who are like, yes. yeah, I want to know more about essential oils. I think you uh-huh. have uh, something for Yes, them. I have an, an ebook. So um, nourishinglight.me. If you head along to nourishinglight.me, you will see that there is an, an ebook. It's called Nourished by Scent. And these are 12 oils that are particularly useful for transforming your relationship with food. So, you know, they're specific for that. And I also go into how to use the oil safely. And um, yeah, if you want to start, give it a little go. That, that's, where, that's where to begin. And, um, and I yeah. have never met, anyone who knows as much about how to use essential oil safely practically practically i'm having a hard time saying that word um not you know with for for food for healing your body for you name it i mean anytime something comes up now i'm like um messaging marisha um like i had this weird thing happen that was an ocular migraine i didn't know what it was um and when it happened i went blind in one eye and i messaged marisha i went blind in one eye what do i do what's the essential oils she tells me what and i start immediately even before i went to the doctor i start diffusing them and um she just you're just a fountain of knowledge on this. So everybody download her ebook, Nourish by Scent. We will have the link in the uh, show notes. So um, there's one other thing I think we wanted to talk about, and that Mm -hmm. is your upcoming, and by the time this goes live, it will be live, um, Tasting Freedom, which I, oh my gosh, I haven't had a chance to tell you yet i absolutely love this name tasting freedom and your group coaching program tasting freedom together that uh-huh. you are now uh-huh. creating can you talk a little bit about that because i'm interested i'm like whoa fill me in <laughs> <laughs> okay so tasting tasting freedom um mentoring is gonna start first and um and tasting freedom together is an opportunity for those who you know, want to do it as part of a, as a group coaching rather than the, the one-to-one that will probably happen in the, um, the beginning of next year after, after Christmas, after the new year. Yeah. 2020. So it'll be in early 2022. Yes. Yeah. That it will um, start, but then hope then it will keep going. So, yes. That will so be exactly. Anybody that's, listen to this past that date. Don't think it's over. Just uh, know that it has started. Absolutely. That will be the group coaching. The mentoring will start this autumn, 2021. And uh-huh. it's based on what I call the menu. So this gives you the seven steps. I, I talk about it like it's a menu at a nice restaurant you get. You get your seven course menu here. Ooh la <laughs> and la. The, Ooh la <laughs> it, la. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to dine out together. Okay. We're going to we're do it in style. And, um, and I always say, you know, if you're going to eat, get the best quality you can get, by the way, just as a, as a, a side note, that helps the taste buds so much, everyone. Um, so anyway, and it takes you through the steps of the journey from eating, what I say, eating disharmony to eating in harmony, from emotional hostage to emotional mastery, from soul seeking to soul centered. And you, and it's all through your relationship with food and your body. And ultimately, you know, we're working from the body. We're going in. First of all, we're working with, you know, your taste buds and your body signals and uh, satiation signals, hunger. We go in, we go in, you start working on the emotions, on the beliefs, and 
we really connect you with that deepest radiance that you are. And then that starts nourishing you from inside out. Yeah. And then you mm, start to I shine like Kathy. Kathy is. Huh? <laughs> Ooh, yeah. yeah. So really. Marisha, if if anybody's listening to this and they're like, yeah. I need more of Marisha, which is how I always feel, everybody. I can never <laughs> get enough Marisha. She knows this. Um, we'll we'll be on a session and she'll be like, What time is it? Oh my gosh. Um, I can't get enough Marisha. She is just uh, amazing. So people who are like, how do I learn more about you? Um, you know, where do I find out about tasting freedom? Uh, is there a website that you have now that they can go to where they can you know, get in contact with you. Yeah, absolutely. Or so my, my email, maybe anything. Yeah. They, they're they're welcome share. to um, go to uh, my website is marishahorsman.com or go to nourishing light.me take, it will take you to the same homepage because nourishing light. Okay. Nourishing light. Me. Light is me. me. Yeah. So, Cause nourishing I think that's easy. Dot me. Dot me. Yeah. yeah. I know my name is a bit easy. difficult to remember. That. So um, yeah. go there. Uh, contact me let me know that you listen to the podcast with Kathy um, and let me know and we'll arrange to have a little chat have a 20 minute 30 minute chat and see if I can help you if I am the one to help you find out what's going on with you and give you a few little tips to get you going absolutely welcome and um, and you're also if you go to um, the courses I have available you'll find out more about tasting freedom as it becomes available at the moment I've just got the um register interest so you can put register interest oh, and then i'll let you know directly um because it's going to be the tasting freedom mentoring is going to be sm yeah small and it's small and select the tasting freedom mentoring because i can't you know take too many people on for that but it's specifically if you want to know you know what's the difference say between tasting freedom mentoring and having say nourishing light sessions with me tasting freedom is particularly to do with food and your body so if you've got food and body issues this is this is the this is the one to go for nourishing like mentoring we also do that but we can people come in with all sorts of issues into to nourishing like mentoring bigger but yeah tasting freedom we're honing like in me, like all my issues yeah, <laughs> yeah tasting childhood <laughs> marital let's see what else crazy <laughs> what did you say emotionally cra crazy crazy emotional emotion? nutcase yeah, that's what Special I was. But I was right. on that right. case. <laughs> Certainly. And yeah, that's something. So I really, that's another thing I would love for your um, listeners to hear that we do not have to be held hostage by our emotions. And I can say that as someone who was completely held hostage by emotions, you know, I didn't, when I first went to live in India, I didn't even know the difference between who I was and what my emotions were, I was so identified. And they can transform and they do transform. And one can live, you know, a life that on the basis of radiant joy, no doubt about it. Yeah. <laughs> so good to hear that. that. You know, one of the things that I think uh, attracted me to you immediately upon meeting you was that you gave me hope. And I think a lot of us, especially somebody that is... Uh, you know, tried as many things as I have in my life, I've given up hope. I just thought, I literally thought, well, there's nothing I can do at this point, you know, and you gave me hope because, because of all the things you've shared today. So if you're someone who has run out of hope, please contact Marisha, please check out the information that she has to share and you will not be sorry. In fact, I'm expecting that you will email me and say, Kathy, thank you for <laughs> connecting with, me with Marisha because everyone I have ever referred her to has done that and said I had no idea how amazing she was and I'm like yeah I know it's hard to even put into words so Marisha thank you so much for being here today and sharing your bright light with everybody oh bless you Kathy you are the you're the dearest to the dear bless you thank you so much for having me I've enjoyed it so much thank you for listening to dare to leap Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share her feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then.